Rudolf Diesel. He was born in Paris, France in 1858. His parents, they were Bavarian immigrants. His family, like many other German families, were compelled to flee in 1870 when the Franco-Prussian War broke out. They moved to London, England, where Diesel attended English language schools. Diesel's mother moved the young 12-year-old Rudolf to Augsburg to live with his aunt and uncle, Barbara and Christoph Barnickel. The goal was to learn German and more complex mathematics before the war ended. He enrolled in the newly created Industrial School of Augsburg after finishing his basic education at the top of his class in 1873. Two years later, he was awarded a merit scholarship from the Royal Bavarian Polytechnic Institute in Munich, where he accepted against the desires of his parents. They would have preferred to have seen him start working right away. Diesel completed his engineering education at the Munich Polytechnic Institute. After completing his degree, he began working as a refrigeration engineer for the Lindy Ice Machine Company in Paris in 1880. Carl von Lindy, the company's founder, taught him thermodynamics in Munich. He soon recognized, however, that engine design was actually his main interest. He began to examine alternative designs. One important one was how to help small business compete with large firms that could harness the power of steam engines, making things much more affordable. Another goal was to create a more efficient engine, utilizing thermodynamic principles. He believed that developing a better engine would aid the underdog, the independent artisan, and even the small business owner. In 1890, he acquired a job in charge of the technical branch of the refrigeration company in Berlin. In his free time, he experimented with engine design. The goal was to preserve patents. Maschinenfabrik Augsburg, now Mann Diesel, and Friedrich Krupp AG, now Thyssen Group, assisted him in developing his inventions. Rudolf Diesel went on to invent various heat engines, including a solar-powered air engine. In 1892, he applied for and was granted a patent for the development of his diesel engine. And in 1893, he published a paper describing the internal combustion engine which uses combustion inside of a cylinder. On August 10, 1893, the first self-propelled operation of Rudolf Diesel's basic model, a single 10-foot iron cylinder with a flywheel at its base, took place in Augsburg, Germany. He was given patents for both an upgrade and the engine itself that same year. Diesel spent two more years improving his engine before unveiling the new model in 1896 with a 75% efficiency compared to the steam engine or other early internal combustion engines. The development of a production model proceeded as expected. Rudolf Diesel received a U.S. patent for an internal combustion engine number 608845 in 1898. Over time, Diesel quickly became a powerful competitor to traditional gasoline engines because it was much more efficient and could run on either petroleum or biofuel. It quickly gained approval for its use in industry, automobiles, railways, drilling equipment, submarine engines, and much, much more. Diesel worked hard to create this engine, not just to improve the fuel efficiency, but also, again, to allow small business to compete with industrial conglomerates. And he accomplished both of those goals. Large corporations became interested in his technology. They used it to their advantage. And more than 65 years after his untimely demise, Rudolf Diesel was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame in 1978. Interestingly, Diesel's death has been treated as a mystery surrounded by suspicion. In September of 1913, Diesel was intended to cross the English Channel to attend a conference in London for the inauguration of a new diesel engine facility and to speak with the British Navy about deploying his engines in their submarines. Instead, he vanished. He was nearly out of money. He had to pay interest on his debts by October 1st that year. Diesel gave his wife 20,000 Deutschmarks in cash, gave it to her in a suitcase before leaving. He then traveled to Belgium to board the SS Dresden. He went to bed after dinner and asked to be woken up at 6 a.m. the next morning. He never showed up for breakfast. 
When his room was inspected, his belongings were arranged as if he were about to go to bed, but the bed had not been used. After searching the ship for Diesel and failing to locate him, the crew concluded that he must have fallen overboard during the night. A few weeks later, a Dutch tugboat in the North Sea discovered a body. Diesel's death was declared a suicide since he was facing financial difficulties. Skeptics say, though, that he was murdered because his oil-disrupting engines were due to be sold to the British Navy so close to the outbreak of World War I. They also believe it, it could have been done to prevent him from rendering ordinary gas engines obsolete, potentially costing oil firms a fortune. Evidence in this case has been and continues to be limited for all explanations. His disappearance and death remain unsolved till today. These are interesting things with J.C.